From not being able to type Pete Parsons in the in-game chat, to playing one of Destiny's most boring events ever created, to having the biggest and fastest ever player fall off despite the most successful expansion ever released. This is the sad, tragic and unfortunate but inevitable decline of the Destiny franchise and Bungie Studios. Bungie Studios, established in 1991 by the founders of Alex Seropian and Jason Jones. I was taking an artificial intelligence class, and Jason was in that class. He had a way cooler computer than I had, which really pissed me off. <laughs> I was working on a game, and Alex was trying to start a company. With the acquisition of Microsoft, went on to creating one of the most amazing and successful gaming franchises in gaming history, Halo. With Halo hitting its peak in 2009 with Halo 3 ODST. The deal was essentially, we make a couple more Halo games, we leave Halo with Microsoft, and we can split amicably. So, I mean, ultimately the price of our freedom was to to leave our baby behind. After Bungie went independent from Microsoft in 2007 and completed its final Halo project of Halo Reach in 2010, Bungie moved away from the Halo franchise which ultimately led to the death of Halo once 343 Industries took over. Despite the major success with Bungie and Microsoft with Halo, Bungie decided to start a new game called Destiny which went on to release in 2014 after a 10 year contract deal with Activision. Little did we know back then that this was just a potential repeat of them starting and killing an entire franchise franchise to move on to rebooting an old one, Marathon, set to release in 2025. We've got Pete who is the Chief Operating Officer, That's which right. is basically like the big dude, the guy who knows everything. So let's talk Destiny. Yeah, well we're excited to be here. We've been working on this project for a long, long time. You know, Halo was awesome. We spent a decade working on it, but we decided to build an all new universe. And uh, this is the very first chance at E3 that we've been able to show what gameplay is like. Pete Parsons joined Bungie in 2002 and later became CEO in 2016, before the release of Destiny 2. A few years later, Bungie and Activision eventually came to an amicable agreement, eventually splitting so Bungie could go independent in early 2019, before the release of Destiny 2 Shadowkeep's expansion. After the split, we saw a ton of things happening internally with the company, like over-delivery, layoffs, and the morale in the company declining because of terrible leadership decisions. A lot of the problems mostly started occurring years after the pandemic had happened when Sony bought Bungie because Bungie simply overhired and expanded too quickly when it just wasn't realistic in the long term. Bungie grew from a company of 120 employees that worked on one of the best games ever made of Halo 3 in the late 2000s, which pushed a few decades later turned into over 1,300 employees by late 2023. With around 10 times more employees at the company, you question how you struggle to maintain your only existing game and its player base, but in reality, their ultimate decision is probably to abandon in Destiny 2 in hopes that their other projects explode and become the next best and biggest franchise is simply unrealistic. Now late last year, Bungie laid off around 8% of their employees with a further 17% only just a few weeks ago. This led to a lot of negativity surrounding the game and what the future holds for the Destiny franchise. We've been hit with a ton of leaks and rumours suggesting that there was never a Destiny 3 in development, that we'll only be getting smaller content drops in the future with no annual expansions, and that the majority of content moving forward will be entirely free to play. So how are Bungie going to make their money considering that they've had the best sales of the past two expansions since the game launched back in 2017? but are still struggling with their revenue goals. In fact, they're struggling that bad that they didn't even do any marketing for Solstice this year, which is the first time that they've not advertised an event in a very long time, if ever at all. The real problem with today's gaming isn't really the fact that certain games like Destiny are too old, stale and repetitive, but instead that there are firstly too many competing live service games, the cost of producing and maintaining content for a live service game is significantly expensive, and content sustainability just isn't there. When you're siphoning revenue from one project that's actually generating money and splitting it into multiple other projects that aren't, you're massively reducing the overall quality and consistency of the initial project, which therefore contributes to less content content, less quality, and lack of consistency. When Bungie originally mentioned the statement of over-delivery back in 2018, and then later split with Activision to go independent, the reduction in quality content was huge. We were no longer getting two new destinations with multiple strikes, raids, and a ton of exotics with a bunch of hidden secrets, like the entire year of Forsaken, and Crucible and Gambit were essentially just ruined. That over-delivery statement, and the decision to sunset and introduce the Destiny content fault, is what truly ruined Destiny 2. In some ways, it felt like the game downgraded and took years to recover.
When it comes to games dying or a game being seen as a dead game, people often use this term on non-live service games. Now I want to clear something up here so there's no confusion. Games like Elden Ring are not dead games or dying games. They are simply completed games. People go onto the game, they play it, they have fun, they complete it and then they move on. Live service games on the other hand like Destiny 2, Smell Divers, The First Descendant and Grand Theft Auto 5, these games can use the term dead or dying game because it's a live service game. Now although a lot of those games may do well, it's also worth seeing the other side to it. GTA 5 for a clear example is a loyal live service game. It's mostly played by the same players day in and day out, all the time, which keeps its player base consistent. This isn't a dead or dying game, but nor is it growing its player base significantly. Destiny 2 on the other hand somewhat has its loyal player base, but they don't tend to stick around every single day. They usually go away, come back for a new season and repeat. Now the problem with Destiny 2 is it is generally on its dying journey. While the game won't die instantly overnight, it is something that could happen over the course of the next few years or even sooner. By this I mean you'll always get those spikes of addicted players coming back trying out the new stuff and then taking a break again, but the issue recently is that people are just getting sick of the same format and structure after years upon years. The final shape was a major success, but the question is, was it really if the players aren't sticking around? When you look at the player count not taking into account the other platforms, you see a pattern. Which Queen's launch month did well, and the months following managed to maintain a decent peak in average player count as seasons came out every 3 months. When Lightfall came out, the same thing happened, but in June 2023, something happened. Morale for the game was declining, people were getting fed up with it, the DLC was bad and the game just got worse and worse so people left. And you could see that as new seasons came out. Peak and player counts were massively down compared to what they usually would be. Average player counts for example couldn't even maintain above 50k on Steam. Even with some of Destiny's best ever seasonal content being released, because it was just too late, the death trend had already started. Push forward to the final shape, while it was very similar in terms of performance to Lightfall, it lost its player base even faster. With month 2 hitting a peak of 100k and an average of 62k, versus Lightfall's second month being 142k and 87k, then month 3 which is August still ongoing, 75k peak with around mid 40k for average player count. Whereas Lightfall's third month went to 192k and 70k, although bear in mind there was a new season with that month. It's becoming that bad that sometimes Destiny 2 is struggling to stay in the top 50 games. That's bad. Why is it bad? Why does it matter if a game is dying and who cares? Well the truth is, it might not matter to most of you, but a game dying, especially when it's a live service game, is bad because we all lose. The developers lose because it means more layoffs, they don't earn enough revenue, the content creators lose because well, views will plummet, and you as the player lose because the game's death will mean lower morale across the board, less game revenue and overall less content. The one main thing I believe has contributed to the game's poor performance is lack of consistency. I'll talk more about this in a bit but the main issue I have with Bungie is that they just don't do much lately. It's like they've gotten lazy or have abandoned Destiny 2 for some other game. Remember when we got those big announcements like Void 3.0, Solar 3.0, Arc 3.0, it's major overhauls like that which I really liked and it got me excited to play the next season because it was just something to look forward to. But now we don't get that. A few little changes here and there but nothing major that really hypes us up to keep playing. They don't market the new sources event, they rarely throw in the next week in Destiny pop-ups, and they just hardly say anything, it's like they want their game to die, and that they're just trying to siphon as much money out of the game as possible, until Marathon launches. Then came Marathon, which was a, a real big hit for us. <laughs> so, Jason, when are you shipping Marathon? <laughs> Marathon was the first shooter that actually had verticality to it. It had that sci-fi sensibility. And Mac gaming didn't even really exist for me before Marathon. Now with events like Solstice, and you know, I kinda get it, I kinda get why Bungie has decided to go the route it's been going lately, and it's a real shame, because the game franchise itself has a lot of potential, and Bungie are just throwing it all away, for what? For a game they think will do better than Destiny. I honestly doubt it, especially for the longer term. Anyway, what I want to go over are a bunch of existing problems in the game that seem to continuously get worse over time, which in my opinion is all down to the over delivery presentation from 2018. With the Solstice event, I get why Bungie hasn't bothered to do any marketing 
marketing for the event this year, like they've always done in the past. We've got no Solstice trailer, no news that a Solstice event was even gonna come out, and everything in general has just been so low recently, especially with the layoffs and all that happening. But you know what the most craziest thing about the Solstice event is? Is that they didn't even bother to bring back skimmers. They mentioned that they would bring them back, eventually, but I mean, it's a missed opportunity for a surfboard skimmer for sure. Considering I hardly buy anything for silver in the store, and haven't since Lightfall's dog emote, a surfboard skimmer is something I generally would have considered buying, but Bunjo, your loss I guess. Now we all have that argument that events just suck. It's the same crap every single year with minimal changes. But you know, if Sources this year has taught me one thing, it's that events indeed can get a lot worse. If the event cards weren't bad enough as it is, implementing a new system to obtain high stat sources armor, where you have to complete bounties, is by far one of the worst things that you could ever add in the game. Back in 2018 and 2019, Sources felt a lot more enjoyable. We were able to go back into old missions with some changes, and we could even get Sources Bright Ingrams for Eververse Cosmetics for completely free. Literally the event was truly free, but as the years went on, Bungie managed to adapt through the Eververse store, through silver, and made it possible so that all cosmetics could only be earned through Eververse. I think they saw the success of Fortnite's item shop and thought, how can we make this 10 times worse? You see, the problem I have isn't with the events. It's the way they deliver the event, and this goes with all events. You could give us the same event year after year, and sure, it'll get boring. But if you're gonna give us free to play events, it needs to be truly free to play, and free to earn all cosmetic items if you put the time into it. This year's event just feels a far lot worse than all past sources events we've ever had. In fact, a few years back, we were able to double focus high stat sources armor, meaning we could get two guaranteed spiked armor stats, which when combined with the old mod system, you could achieve a quadruple 100 stat build. But now, events are just the same old and nobody cares. The Steam charts even prove how much people don't care about the event, because it had the lowest ever peak player count on day one of a new event being launched. Bungie has a serious problem when it comes to lack of consistency. With red borders for example, more specifically, craftable raid weapons. Remember when Bungie started reissuing raid weapons in old raids where you could craft them? I'm talking about Deepstone Crypt and Last Wish. There was a time where we would get news that all the raids will be dropping red borders for their weapons so that you can then work towards crafting them. We had Deepstone Crypt and then we had Last Wish. But what happened to the others like Garden of Salvation? Are we just going to drop them whenever Bungie feels like it? Personally, I feel like Bungie's strategy is to reintroduce something like raid red border weapons and other old content that has some form of nostalgia to it, just so that they can try to repopulate the game and bring back old players when the game is dead. Weapon crafting introduced in Witch Queen was probably one of the best but also the worst things Bungie has ever done. Don't get me wrong, Craftable weapons are great, but when you have those weapons crafted like a commemoration, why use a random ruled hammerhead? If you've got a callous mini tool, why use any other weapon if it doesn't roll with incandescent or other godly perks? Weapon crafting removes the need for certain things. It's great for people like myself who are happy to go for a weapon, craft it, and then they always have it to use, but it makes the value of random ruled weapons kind of pointless. Don't get me wrong, Mountaintop was nice until I crafted a call, but the point is, Spending a few hours getting yourself a craftable weapon may be more beneficial than spending weeks farming for that god rule, like the recluse or mountaintop, that to be honest, you probably won't even use regularly. Now, red border weapons aren't the only problem. DMT, Dead Messenger, Outbreak, Whisper, they all got craftable versions. Where's Hawkmoon? Remember when we had skimmers in the game during Guardian Games and they said that they would return most likely with the next event? Well, when is that exactly? Because it doesn't seem like it's happening anytime soon. Remember the Super Black Shader? Shame you can't get it anymore. As Bungie say, should've played when I played. It all kind of feels too inconsistent. It's like Bungie will add things, update them, or make those adjustments whenever they feel like it. We had old raids given back to us like Vault of Glass, King's Fall, and then Crota's End, but it doesn't seem likely that we'll get Rafter Machine or Leviathan anytime soon. So no new raid red border reissues, no Super Black Shader return, no reprise raids anymore, annual expansions no more, less content drops in the future, we hardly see the next week in Destiny pop-ups anymore, Eververse sometimes 
everyone sells duplicate items because I guess Bungie are running out of ideas to introduce new content and cosmetics, Gambit is a write off, Crucible is screwed, ritual playlists aren't fun anymore, and everything just seems so stale and outdated. But the worst part of all this is that Bungie doesn't seem to be doing anything to make any of it better, instead they make it worse. Don't get me wrong, we've had great quality of life improvements over the years, but the one thing I feel is happening right now is that Bungie are just letting Destiny 2 die off, and the reason for that is because they hope Marathon will be their next biggest thing. It's essentially a repeat of swapping from Halo to Destiny. It's a real shame really, because ever since Shadowkeep, the game has just been going downhill and I feel the blame for that is the over delivery statement and the fact that they started development on Marathon, which took key Destiny 2 workers away from the game. If you look back to the past, you'd see that expansions like Forsaken were cheaper, but they also offered more quality content. We had two destinations, the Tangled Shore and the Dreaming City. We had an amazing raid with a further two smaller raids in the same year. We had the first ever dungeon. We had Menagerie, Black Armory weapons, Gambit for the first time, new supers for every subclass. We had so much content, so much quality content and improvements like random lord weapons returning and being able to use specials again instead of double primaries. It was just insane. And then you compare that to the recent expansions, it just feels so dry and as much as I really don't want to say this, it seems like Bungie have gotten lazy with delivering consistent content. And again, since Destiny was their only focus back then, it's most likely the main reason why we don't get as much content now as we did back then and it really is a real shame. If one thing is for certain, the numbers matter. Lightfall saw a big fall off in players which was understandable, it was a bad expansion, but Final Shape was by far one of the best expansions we've ever had since Forsaken, and sure, the content may feel less, but the quality was right up there as some of the best storytelling we've ever had in Destiny as a whole. It's probably the number one best expansion in Destiny. But despite that major success of the Final Shape, we again lose players. But we didn't just lose players, we lost them a lot faster than Lightfall. And the sad, sad reality is, is that the numbers are only going to continue to fall, and Destiny is going to be on a slow but unfortunate decline until we get something big. Something that will just wow us like a new character, or being able to play as a Cabal or Fallen. Something that just massively shakes up the game, but even then, is it really enough to save Destiny 2? Or is the only solution to start fresh? Fresh from the start as a prequel or sequel, with nothing carried over, so that we can begin a new fresh journey for the next 10 years with a Destiny 3. But it just seems like this will never ever happen now. It's been a long wild journey, but I think this journey might just be at its tragic end. And even if that is the case, it's been a fantastic 10 years filled with such amazing memories, and it really has been a pleasure being part of this community, both as a content creator, but more importantly as a guardian. It's been real, it's been fun, and I wonder what the future holds for the Destiny franchise. We can't lose hope, because after all, it's our destiny. Thank you all for watching, I've been Divide, stay safe, and as they say, I'll see you star side.